Great. So we started with the eigenvalue representation of the transition probability matrix. Um, so um, we've already stated that the, the transition probability matrix can be written in the form of um, this matrix, um, P equals Q, D, and Q inverse, where Q is a matrix, it's a matrix which is made up of the eigenvectors, and uh, D is a diagonal matrix made up of the eigenvalues. So the n-step transition probability matrix also can be written in this form. The proof is in the book. You can also show that the n-step transition probability matrix can be written in this, in this form, the form of this equation. So let me use the example one. The example one, the question one here to illustrate to you how you can express a transition probability matrix um, in the form of um, in, 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 the, in the form of the n step transition probability matrix. So let's look at question one. Can you see question one? You can see question one, just wave me. Uh -huh. So a customer who purchases one or two brand of soap powder every week is influenced by her choice of previous, previous week but not by earlier experience. If she purchased brand A the, the previous week, her current brand purchase will be the same brand with a probability of one over three. So if she purchased brand A this week, the probability that you still purchase brand A the following week will be one over three. And if you purchase brand A this week, the probability that you purchase brand B the following week will be two over three. You know that the sum of the matrix in the row should, should be equal to one. And if, if she purchased um, brand B this week, the probability that you purchase the same brand the following week, that's B, will be one over four. It means the probability that you change from B to A will be three over four. And know that always the sum or the probability in the row should be equal to one. So this is the transition probability matrix. So we've been able to model the states. So we have two states. So, so to answer such a question, first of all, you define your states. So the states are brand A and brand B. Have you seen it? Then we'll simply represent the two states by A and B. So the probability of moving from A to A is one over three, from A to B is two over three, from B to A is three over four, and from B to B is one over, over four. So this is the transition probability matrix. So you want to get, we want to find an eigenvalue representation of the n step transition probability matrix, eigenvalue representation. So the first thing we have to do is to determine the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues for the matrix. The eigenvectors and the eigenvalue for the matrix. And the eigen uh, equation is given by PV equals to lambda V, where V here is a eigenvector and the lambda here is the eigenvalue. So you can write it in this form or in that form. So now we are going to determine the eigenvalue and the eigenvector vectors. So first the eigenvalue. So the eigenvalue P, um, the eigenvalue of the transition probability matrix P are the root of this equation. So anytime you want to find the eigenvalue, the eigenvalues of a vector, you use this equation. P, that's the matrix minus the eigen and value times the identity matrix times the identity matrix times the identity matrix. Uh, Nana Kwame is on. Times the identity matrix. So you you put in the the matrix 
to form the equation. So we, we find the determinant of this equation. So the determinant is this times this. That's the leading rule. This times this minus this times this. That gives us the determinant. Then we simplify it. When you simplify it, you expand, you get this expression. And know that for the transition probability matrix, always, always one of the eigenvalues must be equal to one. For all transition probability matrix, when you determine the eigenvalue, values, one of them must be equal to one. So your problem is to determine the other one. That's if you're having two by two matrix. If it's three by three matrix, your problem is to determine the other two. But always one of them is one. So when you factorize this equation, you obtain the following equation. This is a factorization. So therefore, the eigenvalue, the two eigenvalues are lambda equals to one and lambda equals to minus five over 12. Good. So the next thing we have to do is to determine the eigenvector. Always the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue one is always a, a, a vector containing one, just one, one. The, the, the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue one. As I told you, always one of the eigenvalues is one. That's when you are dealing with transition probability matrix. Always one of the eigenvalues is one. And the eigenvector corresponding to that eigenvalue one is a vector one, one. Always. So with that one, you don't need to work. So we have to determine the, the second eigenvector, which is corresponding to the second eigenvalue minus five over 12. So to do that, to do that, we use this equation. We use this equation. This is a, a eigenvector representation. We use this equation. So we, uh, we substitute the transition probability matrix. We represent the eigenvector by x1, x2 the second eigenvector x1, x2, then uh, equals to the eigenvalue multiplied by the eigenvector, this equation. So we multiply this row, this row by this column, by this column to obtain this equation, the first equation. Then we multiply, <coughs> <laughs> we multiply this row by that column to obtain the second equation. So we have two equations with two unknowns. We solve them simultaneously. But these equations cannot be solved simultaneously. You just use one of the equations to, 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 to work because the, the matrix here, when you determine the matrix here, it will have a determinant of zero. So this equation cannot be solved. So you just pick one of them and use it to find the representation of the second eigen vector. Are you okay? So from so we are using equation one. From equation one, we take this expression to the left hand side. We add it to the one over three x one, and that gives us two over three. That gives us. Um, um, we take this one to that side. We take this one to that side to add up to this and that will give minus nine over 12. That is minus five over 12 minus two over three will give us nine over 12 x1. So two over three x2, that's from equation one, two over three x2 will give us minus nine over 12 x1. This implies that we can express x2 as minus nine over eight x1. Then we express as a ratio x1 over x2 will be equal to minus, uh, minus eight over nine. So now we can take x1 to be equal to minus eight. We can take x2 as equal to nine. 
So the second eigenvector will be minus eight, nine. That's a V2. The second eigenvector will be equal to minus eight, nine. Any questions so far? Any question? It's all good, sir. It's all good. What yes, about uh, the other Jeffrey? Prima. It's okay. It's okay. What yes, about please. Daniel? So far, so good. Yes, please. Nana Kwame. Yeah, I'm following. You are following. Okay. Yeah, Daniel. Yes, yes, Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm muting you again to continue to page five. So we've determined the two we determined the two eigen <clears throat> eigen vectors. The first eigen vector is V1, that's one one. As I um, told you, always the eigen value one correspond to the eigen vector one one. So that one is always like that. But you need to determine the second eigen ve vector v2, which we have done. The second eigen vector is minus eight to nine. Yes, minus eight, eight to nine. So we move to page page five. So now for the for the matrix Q, the matrix Q, the first eigen vector, which is one one, will occupy the first row. Have you seen it? Yeah. And the okay. second eigen vector, which is minus eight nine, will occupy the second row. So that's the that's the matrix Q. Then you find the inverse mm -hmm. of Q. Your calculators mm -hmm. can do two by two matrices. So you can easily find yeah. the inverse of the matrix Q on your calculator. So you find the inverse of the matrix Q. Then we need to find the matrix D. The matrix D is a matrix whose diagonals are the eigenvalues. Remember the eigenvalues? Yes. You remember the eigenvalues? It's one yes. and minus one, five over and 12. Minus five over 12. Good. So the N, the N step transition probability matrix uh, is defined mm. as Q, times d raised to the power n d raised to the power n the diagonals are the eigenvalues raised to the power n okay then the inverse of q so okay. note that is q d raised to the power n which you simply okay. have to raise each of the eigenvalues okay. to the power n okay. then times the q inverse okay. so that gives us the end step transition probability matrix, the eigenvalue representation of the end step transition probability matrix. So, in essence, when you are asked to determine the end step pro, uh, transition probability matrix using the eigenvalue representation, eigenvalue. first you determine your Q. Your Q is a is, is a matrix which contains whose columns are the eigenvectors. Then you also determine your eigenvalues, which form the diagonals of the matrix D. You find the inverse of the matrix Q. Then the, the end step transition probability matrix is a matrix Q multiplied by D raised to the power N, which is just a diagonal matrix containing mm. the eigenvalues raised to the power N them times the q inverse please are you okay so i yes, now multiply this times i'm going to do this multiplication but i'm going to multiply this matrix times this first so first this row times this column mm -hmm. this row times this column. you know one raised to the power n is one so it's this one. times this this row times this column will give us what this row times this column will give us um will give us one yeah. minus 
please are we okay one this, zero. Line, this column will give us one just one because uh, one times one is one and it's minus one yes. eight times zero is zero so this times this will give us one this one it's one yes please. It. then yes. this times this this row times that column so one mm -hmm. times zero is one and minus yes. eight times this will give us this that zero plus this will be this then yes. this row times that column this okay. row times that column mm -hmm. one times one is one is one times zero is zero so this place will be one that's one plus zero then mm -hmm. lastly this row times that column one times zero is zero then nine times this matrix will give us this that's nine <laughs> times minus five over twelve so this that's this matrix times this then we also multiply this matrix Water. this matrix by this matrix so two by two matrix times two by two matrix so can we continue yes please good so first i'll bring the one over 17 here's a constant so i can bring it here mm -hmm. in front so i'm multiplying this matrix this two by two matrix times this two by two matrix so first is row times column always matrix multiplication is row times column and this one you cannot use your calculators because of the n the value n here you can use your calculator for the multiplication you have to do it manually so this row times that column what will be the result one times nine is nine then minus eight this expression times minus one will give you this so this will give nine plus this expression have you seen it then this row times that column this times eight will give us eight then this expression times one will give us the same expression so we have eight minus this expression then we multiply this row the second row here by the first column have you seen it one times nine is still nine then nine times minus one this expression times minus one will give you this then lastly this row times the last column here will give you this expression that's eight then nine minus five over twelve n so this is a this is the n step transition probability matrix that's a, a eigenvalue representation so when you are asking essence to give the eigenvalue representation of the n step transition probability matrix that is the procedure that is a procedure are you okay are you okay please yes sir freeman yes sir, okay. yes, sir. i'm okay okay, mm -hmm. okay. What about the other free man? Sure, I'm good. You are good. Daniel. Yes, sir. Daniel. I'm okay. Happy. You're okay. Nana Kwami. Yes, yes sir. please. Great. Good. So the C the question C says that we should find what you call the limiting the distribution. Limit. What that what was it? Now you have the questions. Uh, mm. so what what did i say it was a c read a c for me freeman uh, is that find find the limit as n approaches infinity good okay. we, we 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 call it the stationary distribution or sometimes okay. we call it the long run distribution you see for every model mm -hmm. all things being equal what would be the situation in the long run uh, okay uh-huh Suppose you are doing economics and you model uh, the Ghanaian economy. They ask you what would be the state of the economy in, in the long run, all things being equal, provided things are moving at the same rate at the current state, what would be the long run distribution? So what we call, this is what we call the long run distribution. The long run distribution, you only raise this value n infinity this value n you raise it to infinity when you raise it to infinity the whole of this will be zero 
this will be zero where you see n raised to it because the fraction inside is less than one okay. uh, less when you raise any number which is less than one to a very big power it goes to zero are you okay mm. any number which the magnitude is less than one the magnitude is a it's a proper fraction what i mean a proper fraction when you raise a proper fraction to a very large power it goes to zero but if the fraction is improper fraction then it will go to infinity so any proper fraction raised to the power a very large power index will always go to zero so to infinity this expression will be zero it will be left with nine this will be zero it will be left with eight this will be zero it will be left with nine this also will be zero it will be left with eight so the long run distribution you know one over 17 is already here so it will be nine eight nine eight this will be the long run uh, distribution or the stationary distribution or the distribution as n approaches infinity so it's, uh, are, are, are you okay yes sir. yes sir good so how do you interpret that matrix nine over 17 you you realize that the columns are the same have you seen this matrix yes yeah. Yes, the columns are the same. If you have 9 over 17 here, this place also should be 9 over 17 for the long run distribution. Mm -hmm. If you have 8 over 17 here, uh, here also should be 8 over 17. So what is the interpretation to that matrix? You can tell me. Based on the question. Freeman. It's, it's, uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking because the the columns are the same. The choices of Charlie, and if you can understand why. Uh huh. So I'm saying that. Um, the customer will follow the choice. The choice will not be influenced by any, any probability. It will follow the same trend as he, uh, he follows in the previous week. What it means is that, you know, the first, the, the first column is for brand A and the second column here is for brand B. It means in the long run, in the long run, out of 17 customers, mm. nine of them will buy, will buy brand A and eight of them will buy brand B in the long run, out of 17. Are you okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Good. So it means out of 17 customers, nine of them will patronize brand A and eight of them will patronize brand B in the long run. So if you have about 100 customers, it means in the long run, nine over 17 times 100 will patronize brand A and 8 over 17 times 100 will patronize brand B. That's if you have 100 customers. That's okay. Are you getting me? So these are just probabilities. So if you know the total number of customers, then you can multiply by these probabilities to give you the long run distribution of the customers that we patronize in brand A and brand B. So we call this one the long run distribution. Are we okay? Lisa, are you okay? Then we move to the next. Yes, so, sir. Yes, uh, good. Yes, 
what about uh, uh, the other guy? Daniel, David. Daniel is okay. I'm okay. Okay, so let's move to what we call the stationary distribution. We'll work through it very fast, the next 20 minutes then. You can go and rest. So let's look at the stationary distribution. Sometimes you can determine the stationary distribution without necessarily finding the n-step transition probability matrix. So I'm going to show you an alternative way of determining the this uh, this stationary distribution without necessarily first finding this p raised to the power n. You go straight to the point. You you determine this matrix straight away without finding this one first. So this one we call it the the eigenvalue representation, but there's a, an alternative way of determining the stationary distribution without necessarily finding the eigenvalue representation first. So let's go through that. So consider an n-state Markov chain Xn. So we have a Markov chain. So the limit as n approaches infinity, that's what we call it, a stationary distribution. As you notice, um, as n approaches infinity, the columns of the matrix become the same. When you look at the previous example, if this place is 9 over 17, this place will be 9 over 17. If it's a 3 over three by 3 matrix, it will be 9 over 17 over this row. Okay. You can talk. You want to ask a question? Primalute, you want to ask a question? Can you hear me? Okay, so the stationary distribution. So the limit for the state n, we denote the limit as n approaches infinity, the long run distribution. Yeah, Freeman, can you hear me? Hello? Sir? Yeah. Okay. It's not so, on. You are on. Okay. It's not. Okay. Okay. So, it's, so, it's, so on. it's on. Okay. So let's move on. Yeah. So now we want to uh, alternative way of determining this stationary distribution. You see, this one first we have to determine the n step transition probability matrix using the mm -hmm. eigenvector and eigenvalues. And then you find as n approaches infinity, and that gives us the stationary or the long run distribution of the process. But there is an alternative way of determining it that uh, determines those probabilities. So we are going to represent the stationary um, probabilities using uh, um, pi. So when you see pi 1, for instance, when you look at this expression, on page five, pi one is nine over 17, pi two is eight over 17. So if there's a third distance, then we'll have pi three. So here pi, the pi, the pi is used to denote the stationary distribution for each column. So we are denoting pi, the stationary distribution for each column by pi. So the pi's are, the, are, are independent of the initial distribution of the Markov chain. So it doesn't matter where you start with the Markov chain, you, you still end at, at that point, you, you, you get it. It doesn't matter where you start, your starting point. In the long run, all things being equal, you all end at the same, at the same place, you, you get it. So the probability transition is given by pi one, pi two up to Pi n. So this is called stationary distribution or the steady state of the distribution. It's also called the limiting distribution of the Markov chain. Are we okay? So now let's start. How do you determine how do you determine the this limiting distribution without necessarily first determining the, 
the end step transition probability matrix. So we call the Markov chain, we call it this. The state is from one to M. Then we have pi to be the stationary distribution or the limiting distribution. Good. So we use these equations to determine the, the stationary distribution. First of all, um, we say that pi, uh, the pi equals to pi times the transition probability matrix. Pi <laughs> equals to pi times the transition probability matrix. And we know that the sum, the sum of, the sum of this pi, because they are probabilities is equal to one. That if you add pi one plus pi two up to pi m, you get one. So this will create equations that we can solve simultaneously to create equation that you can store simultaneously. So first, let's look at an example. This example, um, question eight. You go to question eight in your handout, the handout I gave you. Have you seen question eight? Yes, please. Okay, that's great. So it's a very interesting question. So Je Jeffrey, Alote, can you read it for me? Okay, so it reads, the president of, okay, the president of Ghana tells person A, his intention to run or not to run the next election. So then the, the president of Ghana, is it Ghana or, is it president of Ghana or yes. another country? Or yes, the, president yeah, Ghana. Of Ghana. the president of Ghana tells a person, yes. tell person A, his intention to run or not to run the next election. Okay, he tells okay. person A, hey, let's say Jeffrey. Then now, people are doing all right, all right, all right. Inform <laughs> you, but I don't know what he told you. But I know he, he told you either he will run or not to run, run the next election. Are you getting me? Okay, then you, right. Jeffrey, you also relay to your friend a new, a new person. You told a new person B, huh? who also relay the message to another person C. Uh, who also related it to a, a fourth person called D. So the information went from the president to A, uh, person A, from person A, person A relayed the news to person B, person B also relayed the message to person C, <laughs> person C relayed the message to person D. Uh, do, do you know that if the president say yes, it's not necessarily that what pres uh, person D will hear will still be yes. Sometimes yes, yes. <laughs> the first person may hear yes. By the time it gets to the last person, the answer has changed. <laughs> you understand? Maybe person, yes, maybe person, yes, B, person B is somebody who don't like the president. So he changed the message. <laughs> he changed the message to uh, person C. Etc. Etc. So this, 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 that is a question. Then D also okay. transmitted a message to to E. E. Okay. So we All assume right. that there is a probability of what 0 0.4 that the person will change the answer yes to no. So the probability that a particular person will change the answer from yes to no is 0 0.4. Then the probability that um, uh, a person will change the answer from no to yes is 0 0.2. Have you seen the transition probability matrix? The probability mm -hmm. that a person will change the answer from yes to no is 0 0.4. Note we yes. are denoting yes with one, the with state one, one. Okay. and we are denoting two with the state two. So the probability that the person will change the message from yes to no is 0 0.4. Huh? And automatically, because the sum of a row is what is one, automatically this place becomes what? 0 0.6. And the probability that the, uh, the message from will change from no to yes, yes is 0 0.2. It means the probability that the answer will remain no no to no is 0 0.8 so yes to yes is 0 
yes to no is what? 0 0.4. Then what? No to yes no is 0 0.2. Yes. And no to no is 0 0.8. So this is called the transition probability matrix. Have you seen it? Yes, please. Great. So the second question says that if the president's intention was to run the next election, that's a B. Mm -hmm. What is the probability that the message transmitted to C is no? Uh, have you seen it? So the president mm -hmm. told A that he wants to run the election. What's the probability that B will be giving an uh, uh, opposite answer? No. What's the, what the probability? So this one, it because it's moving from president, the president is the third originator of the message. Mm -hmm. So when it moves to A, it's transition one. That's the first transition. When it moves to B, it's what? Second transition. And because we are moving from the president to B, it means we need the second transition probability matrix. Are you okay? So the second transition probability matrix, you raise the matrix P to the power two. Uh, and your calculators can easily do this multiplication for you. So you raise the matrix P to the power two. So when you raise it to the power two, it gives you 0 0.44, 0 0.56, 0 0.28, and 0 0.72. Are you okay? Yes, please. Great. So now, so listen, Jeffrey. I, I think your your mic is on. No, it's off. I just turned it on. So Jeffrey, how will you interpret this zero point four four? That's Freeman. So as in, as in um, the probability of people that say yes and still remain yes would be 0 0.44. Uh, 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 no, not exactly. The probability of yes and still remain yes is 0 0.6. Mm -hmm. have, have you seen it? Mm -hmm. the, the probability of yes and still remain yes to A is 0 0.6. That the probability of yes and still remain yes to B, that, that's, a, that's a third person, will be, that's a 0 0.44. Okay, so this is for the third person specifically. This is the, for the third person. So this, this matrix person. is for the third person. So this mm, is a probability okay. distribution for the third person. That's, that's, a, that's a ter, the B. So this is a probability distribution for the first person. I will say, this is what the president told him. These are, these mm -hmm. are the probabilities. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to the third person, the transition probability will change. So that, that's why we find that the second step transition probability matrix. Have you seen it? So P12 right. mm -hmm. here represents what? The question says that, what's the question? If the president intention was to run the next election, it, it means the president told A, yes. What's the probability that C, is it C? Yes. No, C is the second transition. So the first transition is A. Have you seen it? The first transition is A. The, the first transition is from A to B. And the second transition is from where? B, B to C. B to C. B to C. So it is A which is having the original message from the from the president. From the president. He is having the original, he knows the original message that came, whether it's no or yes. But B doesn't know. But what's the probability that when A is transmitting the message to B, what's the probability that it will change from yes to no? It's 0 0.4. When A was transmitted to B, what's the probability that it will remain yes? It's 0 0.6. 0.6. Okay. Uh -huh. If it was no, what's the probability that when A was transmitting it, it will still remain no? Uh, it's 0.2. If it was no, 
the original message from the president was no. What's the probability no. that when A is transmitted to B, it will still remain no? Is 0 0.8. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? Uh huh. Yeah. But now B is also transmitting the message to what? To C. Mm -hmm. So what's the probability that by the time the message gets to uh, uh to C, it will it will remain yes. It will be yes to yes. That's zero point four four. What's the probability that it will change from yes to no? Is zero point five six. Uh huh. The probability mm. that from A to C, it will still remain no. If the original message is no, is 0 0.28. The probability that it will, no, the probability that it will change from no to yes, that from A to C, by C will get, by the time C will get it, it has changed from no to yes, it is 0 0.28. And the probability that it will remain no from A to, to C is 0 0.72. Please, are you okay? Yes, please. Great. From B to yes, C sir. To Good. So the question, what was the question for B? Read it for me. It says that write down the transition probability method. As a B. B. As a B. Of the, uh, if the president's intention was to run the next election, what is the probability the, the, that... The president the said yes. Yes is one. Uh, one. What's the probability that C will receive no? No. So it's made one to two. Is that not so? So that's 0 0.56. Mm, 0 0.56. 0 0.56. So the, the message transmitted to C is no, given that the message relayed to A is yes, is 0 0.56. Okay. So A received yes, but by the time it got to C, it was no. What's the probability? It's 0 0.56. Maybe the B guy doesn't like the president, so he decided to change the answer. <laughs> when he was relaying the news. So the probability will be 0 .0, 0 0.56. Good. Then what's the C? The question C. That's if the president's intention was not to run the next election. Not to run means no. Have you seen it? What is the probability that... Uh, What's the probability that yes, please. E. the message transmitted to E is still no. No. So no. From A to E is how many transitions? It is four transitions. From A to E. A to E is four A transitions. To, yeah, it's four transitions. So you need to find a four-step transition probability matrix. So you raise the transition probability matrix to the power of four. And that gives us the, the four-step transition probability matrix. Have you seen it? And we want no to no. If the president said no, what's the probability that the fourth person will still be no? That okay. no to that two, two. That will be this value. Have you seen it? Yes, please. No to no. So uh, the, the probability that the fourth person... And that will be that 0 0.675252. Five two, yes. That's one. We want the probability 2 2. 2 is for no. And the, the other 2 is also no. But this 4 means we are moving four transitions. That we are moving from A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to E. That's four transitions. So, first, you determine the fourth transition probability matrix and use that matrix to answer the question. Please, are, are you okay? So yes. the probability that the message transmitted to E is no, given that the message relayed to A is still no, is 0 0.6752. Then the D. The D is where most of the marks, because it involves a lot of work here, the D. A lot of work. Uh -huh. So what is the D? It says find the stationary distribution of the Markov chain with the transition probability matrix T in A. Hence, find the proportion of Ghanaian that received the message, yes, of the president intention to run the next election in the long run. Please, have you seen it? Mm. Good. So, we are on the D. So, the D, there are two methods. 
What's the first method? The first method is the first one I taught you. That you first find the n step transition probability matrix. Then you put the n to infinity. Then that will give you the stationary distribution. The second step is what you are going to go through right now. That's using, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you don't need to first determine the, the n step transition probability matrix. You can determine the stationary distribution straight away without necessarily going through the n step transition probability matrix. Are we okay? Please, are you okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Great. So the transition probability matrix, what's the dimension? What's the dimension of the transition probability matrix we are dealing with? Is it two by two matrix? It's three two by, by three. three. It's two by two. Two by two matrix. Good. And because it's two by two matrix, you're going to have pi one and pi two. If a three by three matrix, you have pi one, pi two, and pi three. It's a four by four matrix. You have pi one, pi two, pi three, and pi four. So the number of pi's you use de depends on the dim dimension of your transition probability matrix. So because the transition probability matrix is two by two, the limiting distribution or the stationary distribution will be represented by pi one and pi two. And always a sum of all these limiting distribution is equal to one. So pi one plus pi two is equal to one. And that forms our equation one. But we have two unknowns. And even when we have two unknowns, we need at least two equations to solve simultaneously. So how can we find the second equation and use it with equation one to solve for pi one and pi two simultaneously? So we use this expression, 5p equals to 5, uh, where p is a transition probability matrix. So you multiply pi, the, 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 the vector called pi, you multiply by the transition probability matrix, and it will be equal to the vector pi. So you multiply this times this, that will be 0 0.6 pi 1, plus 0 0.2 pi 2, and this will be equal to pi 1. Then you multiply this by this, and that will give us what? 0 0.4 pi 1 plus 0 0.8 pi 2, and that will be equal to pi 2. So we have equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. You can choose any two of these three equations and solve them simultaneously any two of them it will give you the same answer. So you can decide to use equation one and equation two, or use equation one and equation three, or you can even use equation two and equation three. All of them will give you the same answer for pi one and pi two. And I think your calculators can easily solve simultaneous equations without necessarily going through the steps. Do you know how to use your calculator to solve simultaneous equations? Yes, sir. You know how to do that. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Yeah, we do. Because this is a written work, I'll use manpower to do it. So I use equation um, um, from from where? From equation two. From equation two, I I move this to this side. It will go and subtract. Is that not so? So mm -hmm. we have um, um, is it from equation two? From equation two. Okay, no, this one rather. When you move this to the other side, you get what? Zero point five pi one. You want to be the I think you use I use what? Okay. Equation three. Okay, I use equation three. Okay. Yes. So when you move um, this one here, you move the this one here, you get mm -hmm. zero point two pi two. So you get zero point four pi one equals to zero point zero point two pi two equals to zero point four pi one. Mm -hmm. 
So it means pi uh, two will be equal to two times pi one. So you substitute this into equation one, and that will give you pi one. And from equation five, you can also get your pi two. So what is pi one? Pi one is what? One over three. One over three. And pi two is two over three. Alternatively, if you want to use your calculators, please are you with me? Yes. If you want to use your calculator to solve this simultaneous equation, first move this pi one to this side. It will go and subtract this. You get minus zero point four pi one. Then you move the pi two to this side to go and subtract. You get minus zero point two pi two. So you get two equations with zero zeros here. Then you enter the coefficients here into your calculator. Then your c's here will be zero, zero. Then you solve it. When you solve it, you get the same answers. So you can use your calculators also to solve the simultaneous equation. Are we okay? So what's the stationary distribution? What is the stationary distribution? One over three. That's one over two and one over three and two one over three, three and two over three. And how do you interpret practically this stationary distribution? You are statistician. And uh, now for do course you to come and do a research for as to whether you win the next election. And you obtain this stationary distribution. What will be your interpretation to the president? I'm listening. Any of you can answer. Freeman, Freeman, Alute. Yes. Uh -huh. What what Sorry. what was the interpretation of one? Is it statistics? It's not useful if you cannot interpret your 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 results. How do you interpret the one over three? Is it at the long run? At the long run. The president's message to run the election, the next election will be. In the long run, one third, one, third, one third of the population will hear yes. And in the long run, yes. two thirds of the population will hear no. In the long run, okay. as the message is being relayed, one third of the entire population will hear what? Will hear yes. It. Irrespective of the answer, the original answer of the president, this distribution does not depend on the original answer mm -hmm. of the president. But in the long run, one third of the irrespective of what happened, one third of the population will hear yes, and two thirds will hear no. Please, are you okay? Yes, please. Great. So this is a stationary distribution using this approach. You can also use the n-step transition probability matrix to achieve the same distribution. So let's go to question 12, the question about the height. Are you seeing question 12? Yes, please. Great, so let's go through that question quickly then be close for the day. So, uh, Freeman Lute, can you please read the question for me? Hmm. In his yearly vacation, Mr. Hyde selects one of three places, Africa, Europe, and India, using the following rule. If he has, if he has been to Africa the next year, the past year, he will choose Europe uh, the past year, you will choose Europe with probability 2 over 3 and India with probability 1 over 2. If he okay. has been to please, Europe the past please. year... Pause. Start the question again. Okay. It says, in his yearly vacation, Mr. Hyde selects one of three places, Africa, Europe, and India, using... Sorry. Place you wait. So we, we denote Africa with one. With one. 
because we are going to model it as um, a Markov chain, you have to denote it with values. So we denote Africa as one, Europe as two, then India as three. three. Have you seen it? Mm. Uh -huh. And always Mr. Hyde is vacation. He always spend his vacation in one of these three, three locations. Three locations. One of these three locations. Have you seen it? Mm. Great. So the first question said we should model the information as a Markov chain. First of all, you define the, the Xn. Have you seen the A? I'm looking at the A now. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Please. So first, you denote Xn. You use Xn to denote the the place where Mr. High spent spent his vacation in the year N. So we use this as a Markov chain. So we can denote the state Africa as one, Europe as two, and India as three. So the one-step transition probability matrix is then given by this. Please read the question again so that I can interpret this matrix. Okay. It says that in his yearly vacation, Mr. Hyde selects one of the three places, Africa, Europe, and India, using the he has been to Africa the past year. He will choose Europe with probability yes. two over three. If, if and spent, India with probability one over three. Please relax a little. If, if he was in Africa this year, the probability that mm. you've been in Europe the following year is two over three. Is that not so? Two over three. Yes, please. And if he was in Africa this year, the probability that he will move to India is one over three. Yes. Have you seen it? Mm. That the sum of a row is equal to one. It means this place will be zero. Equal to one. The sum of every row is one. So two over three plus one over three is already one. So it means this place must be zero. zero. It means if he, he was in Africa previous year, the probability that you still go to Africa the following year is zero. zero. Uh -huh. So suppose this year he spent his vacation in Europe. The probability that you still go to Europe the following year is three over eight. The probability that, no, the probability that you move from Europe to Africa is three over eight. The probability that you still remain in Europe will be one over eight. The probability that you move from Europe to India is one over two. So suppose this year he spent his vacation in India, then the probability that he will move to Africa the following year will be one over two. The probability that you move to Europe is also one over two. And the probability that you remain in India is zero. Because the sum in the row is equal to one. So that's the transition probability matrix. Do you understand the transition probability matrix? Do you understand the transition probability matrix? Yes, sir, we understand so far. We understand so far. Great. So what was the first question? The que first question says that we should model this situation model as a map of change. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have done. That's the A part over here. So we have model the 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 situation as a Markov chain, and we have determined the the one step transition probability matrix. So that's the one step transition probability matrix. Good. So let's go to the B. What's the B. The B says if he if he spends his vacation in Africa in 2012. Find the probability that he will spend his vacation in Europe in 2014. 2012 to 2014 is how many years? It's two years. It's two years. Two steps. So if it's two years, we need the second step transition probability matrix. 
So the, the <laughs> transition probability matrix given up there, this one, is a one step. That it, it calculates one year, only one year transition. But if you want to calculate two years transition, then you need that second step transition probability matrix. So how do you determine the second step transition probability matrix? You raise the one step transition probability matrix to the power two. <coughs> So that gives us the second step transition probability matrix. So that's, your calculators can easily do that for you. So you raise the, the one step transition probability matrix to the power two, and that gives us the second step transition probability matrix. So we use the second step transition probability matrix to answer that question. So what was the question? Read the question. If he spent his vacation in Africa in 2012, fine the probability that you spend his vacation in Europe in what, 2014. Africa is one, Europe is what, two. So you want the transition from one to two, which is three over 12. So the answer to that question is three over 12. Are we okay? Yes. You're okay, great. So let's move to question C. Are you seeing question C? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Initially, in, in Europe, find the probability that he will spend his vacation in India after two years. After two years. Mm -hmm. So if initially he spent his vacation in Europe, find the probability that he will spend his vacation in India after two years. After two years, how many transitions? After that two is, years, how many transitions? After two years, is how many transition? It's, it's two transitions. It's two transitions. Is that also? Yes, please. Yes. Great. Great. Then we were told that initially Spain is vacation in what? In Europe, you know the first, Europe. the first, this, this what you call the initial probability distribution. We call mm -hmm. this p raised to the power zero, the initial probability distribution. And we're told that this, the first, the first this thing here is for Africa. Africa is one, and number two is what Europe. Europe. Number three is what India. Yeah. Have you seen it? And because it's, we, we, we know that initially, the initial he spent his vacation in Europe. So we give Europe one and the rest will be zero because the sum should be one. We are sure, we know, we were told by the question initially, he spent his vacation in Europe. So the probability that he was in Europe that year is one. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. So you know initially he was in Europe. So it takes a probability of one and once it takes a probability of one. Europe takes a probability of one. Africa and what, India will take a probability yeah, take of zero because the sum yeah. of the probability yeah. should be equal to one. Please, are you okay? Yes, please. Good. So what's the question again? If he spent what? His vacation if in Europe. Spent, what? Find the probability that he will spend his vacation in India after two years. After two years. So you determine the two-step transition probability matrix. And where is India? Which column is India? Is it this, this, or this? The last one. The last one. So because we want the probability that will be in India after two years, first you find the because it's two years, you find the second step transition probability matrix. And because the third column represents India, and you want the, the probability that you'll be in India after two years, you take the third column. So that's why I multiply the initial probability times what? The third column. Because we are interested in the, of the probability that you'll be in India after two years. And India is the third column. So the the initial transition probability multiplying the third column of the second step transition probability matrix. So when you do that multiplication, it gives you a 12 over 64, which is three over 16. That this times this plus this times this plus this times this 
to you 12 over 64. So the probability that he will be in India after two years, if initially he was in Europe, is what, three over 16. Are you okay? Yes, please. Great. So what will be the probability that he will remain in Europe after two years? Can you answer that question? Mm -hmm. What's the probability? The same C. We are talking about the same C. Suppose same I C. ask you, and I change the question. I ask you, what's the probability that after two years, you will be, you will remain in Europe? If initially was in Europe, what's the probability that after two years, you remain in Europe? If the initially was in Europe, I'm listening to you. And then, and then we'll take the second, uh, the second two-step transition matrix. So, so you go to the second the, part of it. You, the second uh -huh. column. The second column. Yes, please. Mm. Have, have you seen it? So instead of yes, in the third column now, you now use the second column. And if they mm. ask you that what is mm. the probability that after two years you will be in Africa, if initially it was in Europe, then you okay, first one. multiply the initial the first one. by the first one. Have you seen it? So yes, when they give you an initial probability, you always multiply by where you are expecting it to be, that column. You multiply by that column, and that gives you the required probability. Are we OK? Great. Yes. So let's go to the D. What is the D? Is that what proportion of times will he spend his vacation in India, uh, in Europe, in the long run? long run? So whenever you see the word long run, then they want the stationary distribution. Stationary. So they want you to determine the stationary distribution. And because the transition probability matrix, what the dimension is three, it, it means this time we have pi one, pi two, and what, and pi three. Now always the sum of all the pi is equal to one. So pi one plus pi two plus pi three is equal to one. Then you can create another three equation by using this matrix multiplication. That's pi is equal to pi times p. Pi is equal to pi times p. Please have you seen it? Pi is equal to pi times p. So how do you get this equation? Pi is equal to pi times p. Pi is equal to pi times p. Always that's the equation. So let's do the multiplication. This, this, this times this will be what? We are multiplying this times this. So pi 1 times 0, pi 2 times 3 over 8, pi 3 mm -hmm. times what? 1 over 2. And you equate that to be equal to pi 1. And that will give us the first equation. And pi, pi 1 times 2 over 3, pi 2 times 1 over 8, pi 3 times 1 over 2. Then you equate it to equal to pi 2. That will be the second equation. Then mm -hmm. pi 1 times 1 over 3, pi 2 times 1 over 2, pi 3 times 0. That to give you this third equation, which I have named equation 4. So we have equation one, equation two, equation three, equation four. So, but we, there are only three unknown. So we need three of the equations. So you can use any three of these four equations to solve for pi one, pi two, pi three simultaneously. Are we okay? Mm -hmm. So which equation do you pick? One, two, and three. You can use equation one, two, and three. Always equation one is the easiest, so we choose equation one together with any two. So you can choose equation one, two, and four, let's say, and use it to solve. You can also use your calculator to solve. How do you use your calculator to solve? First, you set the equations this way. First, you set your calculator will give you x1, x2, x3, instead of pi one, pi two, pi three. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So in your calculator first, you do, this will be uh, 
uh, equation one. Then equation two, you take this pi one to this side for equation two. So you have minus pi one plus three over eight pi two plus one over two pi three equal to zero. So that would be, that's if you are using your calculator. That's the way you set the equation. Then if you want to use equation three, you also take this pi two to come and join to this one. Okay, then you create this to be equal to zero. So this will be equal to zero, this will be equal to zero, this will be equal to one. So on your left hand side, your D will be one zero zero. So you set your, your distance that way, then you can use the calculator to solve it. I think the easiest way is to use your calculator. You know, some of you are not used to the one power. So learn how to use the calculator to solve these simultaneous equations. So when you solve them and solve them very well, you obtain pi one to be equal to three over 10. Pi two to be equal to four over 10. Then pi three to be equal to three over 10. Please, have you seen it? Mm. Yes, sir. Great. So, um, who is also Daniel? Is Daniel around? Sir. I can't hear your voice. So. Then you can yes, you interpret pi one is equal to three over ten. Can you interpret it? Suppose you conduct a research for your boss and you obtain pi one to equal to three over ten. How do you interpret it? First of all, one what does one denote? One denote Africa. Is that also Africa? Yes. And two denote yes. what? Two denote Europe. Europe. And three denote India. 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 Okay, so what India. is pi one? You know one denote Africa. So I'm helping you to interpret. What is pi one? Pi one denotes Africa. Africa. No, no, no. One denote Africa. By pi one, I'm just helping you to give me the correct answer. One denote Africa. It in pi one has to do with Africa. But pi one is not is not Africa. One denotes Africa. So what does pi one okay, do you interpret okay, that okay. three over ten? All right. Your answer should be related <laughs> to Africa. That's all. That's what I want to tell you. Mm. If I ask you to uh, 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 explain what pi mm. one is. Okay, what is pi two? Pi two is written under the probability that after sufficient long time. Mr. Hyde will spend his vacation in Europe. It's what? Three or four? It's four. four. Have you seen it? Mm. Yes. Sir. I've interpreted pi two under. That's what the question says we should determine. Okay. That is pi two. What the question says we should determine is pi two. Yeah, I'm listening. At the long run, the probability that Mr. Hyde will spend his vacation in Africa is 3 over 10. Uh, which is 0 0.3. 0 0.3, yes. Yes. So in the long run, the probability that Mr. Uh, uh, he are used sufficiently long time. <laughs> okay. therefore, therefore, the probability that after sufficiently long period of time, Mr. Hyde will spend his vacation in Europe is 4 over 10. After a long time, the probability that you spend his vacation in Africa is three over 10. And after a long time, the probability that you spend the vacation in, in India is also three over 10. So we call it a long run distribution. After a long period of time, all things being equal, the these are the distribution of the probabilities. Please, have you seen it? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So we call it the long run probability. But the question says that we should find the long run distribution for Europe. So that one is four over 10, which is 0 0.4. So that's the answer for the D, the question D. So with this, we should to un understand all the other questions I've solved. They follow the same procedure. The questions are different, but they follow the same procedure. Okay. Uh -huh. So even as long as if I change the question slightly, it will be the same procedure. 
the same procedure. So there's no way you can fail.